Hi, family. Hi, friends. Hi, food lovers. Hey, neighbors. Hey, community. Hey, comics. People who like to cook, connect, and kvetch. Thanks so much for joining me for Hot Dish. Hello, and welcome to Hot Dish. I'm your host, Lauren Huberman, and today I am here with a special, special lady, Sonal Agarwal. And Sonal is a fabulous stand-up comic. She's a storyteller. She's a street performer. She is an international woman of mystery and an all-around <laughs> great gal. So welcome. Hello. Hey, Lauren. Hello, everyone. Hello, listeners. Hello, listeners. All three of you. Just are you out there? Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So no, I'm so glad to have you on. I, we haven't had a chance to see each other since our writing class. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. But we have hung out in the Zoom room before. That's right. Oh yeah, we have. We have. I think, you know, my favorite part of the writing class was you. Um, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> getting irritated with that guy, the the Republican, the Republican guy who had to remind us that he was a Trump supporter. Like every five minutes, we're like, we get it. The good for you. You have an identity. That's important. Hold on to that. <laughs> I mean, it was so funny to watch your face. You were just like losing your mind, but in the funniest way. And My face betrays me every day. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I've been trolling you on Instagram. I love it. Like a big weirdo. And I saw pictures of you swimming in Lake Michigan. And yes. I want to hear about that and like how you got started doing that, why you're doing that. So I got started doing it because I love swimming. I love being in the water. And I am a responsible COVID believer. And I feel like I have people in my friend circle who are like, it's a pandemic. And I'm like, okay, please put, save that for your journal. That's fine. That we all have opinions. That's great. But I mean, the, the, the virus, it's, it's real. It's real. Okay. It's, it's real. real. <laughs> so it's real. And I didn't feel comfortable going to a public pool. And I expressed that to a friend and she's like, you know, there's this group of women that go in Hyde Park here in Chicago at the promontory point. They swim every single morning. And she sent me an image of this woman, uh, Jennifer. And it's like these older ladies and their names are Joan and Deidre. These are very like old lady names. And, <laughs> and these bitches are in there every single morning at sunrise. Wow to swim. So, you know, knowing that there was a group of older women actually gave me an incredible sense of security where I'm like, you know, you watch this woman, Joan, and I don't know how old she is, but she literally swims. I mean, the first time I got in, I just kind of did a dip and people ask me what the breathing technique is. Let me take you through it. It's like this. It's like, okay. <laughs> and then you do feel so alive. You feel this incredible, you know, like um, little ice knives all over your body, followed by an incredible tingling. And then this kind of heat because your blood vessels constrict. And then when you get out of the water, they, they dilate and you feel all this blood and you feel this heat all over your body. And um, I mean, you know, I'm a big adrenaline junkie. So, yeah. you know, this this is much cheaper than skydiving. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Sonal, that is crazy. How often are you doing this? I, last week we went like four days in a row. I'm okay, I skipped the single digit degree days when it was like eight degrees, minus 10 degrees. And these women are, are still in there. And I'm like, I'm gonna wait till it gets to, 15. I'm going to wait till it gets to 15 degrees. Oh my God. That is insane. That it's is insane. That is really crazy. It does get addicting though. And yeah. you get, you know, as a stand up, our lives before were like 
you're up till two in the morning, you know, and sometimes eating at like 11, having dinner at 11 or midnight. And now, I mean, I've been going to bed at like 10, it gets to nine and I'm like, oh, it's almost time for me to wind down and go to bed, you know, because I need to, because it's not like going to the airport where you can just be up all night and then go, you know, get up at, at, at sunrise and get on your flight and pass out on the flight. You know, I was kind of staying up late, going to the lake, and then I would be destroyed for the rest of the day. So I have to get some sleep. I have to get some proper sleep. And then um, it is really cool seeing the sunrise. I've like never seen the sunrise before. I mean, I have, but <laughs> if I'm up all night, you know, so to if wake you're up. you're leaving a 4 a.m. bar or something and you're like. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, shit, you know, you're like, we've been up all night. That's bad. <laughs> Go away, evil Death Star, you know, but that moment when the horizon and the sun are like kissing, you know, like, it's, it's very romantic. It's <laughs> very romantic. Oh and I, and I, and I'm not going by myself, you know, like there's, there's a whole little community going. Yes. 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 I just, I cannot get over that. I, and, and is it the same shock every time you get in? It's, um, it's different. It's a, it's a different, I'd say spectrum of wanting to get in. There are days where you're like, I cannot wait to get in the water. And there are days where it's like, don't do this. You don't, you don't have to do this, but that almost pushes you farther because you're like, no, I've made it this far. I know I'm going to feel good once I actually do it. You know, and then, and then, um, I mean, even the last day that I went, um, I was like, oh, I forgot my towel. I can't get in, you know, and one of my girlfriends was like, oh, my towel is actually dry. And I'm like, oh, damn it. You know, <laughs> I was like, trying to make excuses. And she's like, your ass is getting in the fucking water, you know, and I'm like, okay, fine. And then, and then I always feel so amazed. I think it's actually kind of similar to the feeling of like doing, of having a great set on stage. Yeah. 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 Totally. Like that rush. And like, then afterwards you kind of crash a little bit and you're just like, I need a nap down or yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, oh my gosh. Have you been doing, well, you know what? I totally forgot. I'm also supposed to be cooking something. Yes. What are you making? I will describe <laughs> everything to oh, our listeners. You are amazing. So I, I'm making a, I'm making a cake. Ah! And, um, I, I keep making all these really sweet things. I mean, let's be <laughs> real. I eat sweets, you know, every day, multiple times a day, but I'm making a cake and I'm going to decorate it um in your honor so i need to get to that point um what, it, what kind of cake are you making uh, i'm just making a vanilla um sheet pan cake actually it's going to be this little round pan cool round pan that i have my parchment paper in already amazing um, but yeah like if i don't okay so let me like get started a little bit so i'm going to make this vanilla sheet pan cake i need to crack my eggs that was a very professional egg crack, you guys. That was very Julia Child. And as a lover of sugar myself, can I just share with you that I finally got myself my Obamacare together to get to a dentist after like two years of no dentist. I have four cavities. Four. No. Oh my God. Did they give you the whole spiel about like a cavity is just a natural indentation or were they like you need to slow down what you're doing. She was super nice about it. She was <laughs> like, she's like, you know, it could be hormones. It could be, it's, it's so normal. Then okay. the uh, assistant was like, girl, I always have cavities, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. I remember, I for sure remember feeling so ashamed as a kid, you know, like oh, you're disgusting. Yeah. It's your fault. Oh my God. Totally. Um, okay. I'm just whisking the eggs and the sugar. She also, she also, she also sorted some of my old cavities. She's like, I'm like, do I have mercury fillings? Cause I have some fillings from like the eighties and she's like, yeah, but it's not like you just have like liquid mercury in there. You know, like she made me kind of like relax about my mercury. She got rid of them. She got rid of them. Okay. Yeah, we got some. They replaced it probably. Yeah. Like, they replaced it. And... Oh my God. So, okay. I just, um, I just use a whisk. It was really easy just to whisk the eggs and the sugar and um now I need to add my oil 
and um, my milk and my vanilla extract. So I'm putting in my vegetable oil. I can't believe you're making a vanilla cake for me. I feel like I should get a dark chocolate cake. Chocolate, well, chocolate. Um, <laughs> maybe I, mi I missed the mark, but I have my reasons. Oh, I can't wait to hear your reasons. I'm well, I mean, I am going to decorate it. And so for me, there's like something a little bit scary about like, you know, you know the cake that they made on Steel Magnolias? Did you see that? Or she made like the big cake and it was like, oh. I'm, I'm going to, I mean, I definitely remember that movie. I think it was the um, Armadillo cake. Maybe I'm thinking of another movie. And anyway, it just looked kind of scary. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, but... the problem is I'm just like watching too many things. Yeah. So it's really hard to keep. Oh my God. Oh, oh, right. Look at. Is that right? I don't know what I'm saying, Sonal, but I just went with vanilla because I thought it would be easier with the frosting. That that was my real reason. I guess that's pretty easy to say. It had nothing to do with armadillos. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Armadillos are. That's another conversation. <laughs> Armadillos are a pretty cool animal. I don't I don't know anything about armadillos, but I'm always like, you look at you with like your armor. <laughs> yeah. You know, I identify with that. I I feel like, you know, we have to channel our armadillos sometimes and just just get in there. I I feel like that's what 2020 was, like the year of the armadillo where it's like, okay, we all need to just hunker down, get our armor up. You know, I mean, I I'm so grateful to be in my 30s for a pandemic like can you imagine being like a freshman in college no. on zoom my freshman year of college i took so many psychedelics i was like <laughs> i'd be i'd just be like staying and not only that you know like where you're like just staying up for days at a time because you're so young oh my god i know freshman year i went that moment that you realize like i can stay up all night yeah whatever I want. I mean, it's, I don't need to sleep. That's like a made up thing. And then, and then you hit like 25 and you're like, um, that's over now. I need, I need to, I just, maybe 30. Totally over. Oh my God. I, um, I was on academic probation my freshman year. <gasps> I, Lauren! I know I didn't even, I didn't even know it. I, it just happened. I just got this awful letter and I was like, Oh, <gasps> What's happening to For me? For what? Bad grades. What? I was a moron, Sonal. Like, oh, I, <laughs> I started every paper with the words in today's society. <laughs> <laughs> Your math, math paper, like in today's society, A plus B equals. <laughs> no, and I thought it was like such an important commentary, you know, like. In today's society, people really are doing these kinds of things. <laughs> it was so stupid. That is so, that sounds fine. I don't know. I guess I have to see some of these essays. Yeah, they were, they were shit. They were awful. And my mom would like pound her fists at me and be like, stop writing like that. Didn't oh, that's, you? See, yeah. my, I feel like I like kind of figured out whatever this game was of education to satisfy my professors, mm -hmm. you know, and like get the good grades. And then I really didn't take, I love learning, but I thought the education system was such a mess, you know. I know, sorry, I got distracted for a second. No, I, I thought, I thought your sound cut for a second. No, 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 like I'm you. just, I'm just thinking for a minute. Um, no, I hear you. Well, you were probably smarter than me and a better student, truly. Well, I mean, I was just better at, like, pretending like I was a good student, but I secretly was like, all of this is nonsense. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, I, I didn't think any of it was nonsense. I was, like, totally scared shitless, but then I would get so conflicted and be like, this is so much fun. I don't know. <laughs> okay, tell us what's okay. happening now. You've okay. got whisked eggs and yes. sugar. Whisked eggs, sugar, vanilla extract, and vegetable oil. I am adding my flour, baking powder, and salt to it. And I am going to use a beater just for a minute for that. Now, Sono, I did not tell you that this cake is in your honor because I'm going, it's in honor of your polar plunges. Okay, there it is. I there didn't get is. to that part because I was thinking about the armadillos and, and everything else. But um, I'm going to decorate it. 
for you in your oh own with the polar plunge. I do have a little like model that's supposed to be you. It looks nothing like you. It, I, we'll get there. Okay. How, how do I virtually eat the cake though? This is. I'm, I'm gonna bring it to you. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't believe it. Oh, I get ready for more cavities, teeth, because we're, we're. I was like, do I need to cut down on my sugar? And then she, she, the dentist was like, dark chocolate is really good because it melts right away. Candy is really bad. I liked how she started like classifying the sugars. And oh my god! Did she tell you that four cups of powdered sugar is probably bad too? <laughs> Oh she, my God. <laughs> you, you know, another reason, because I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up in the Southwest suburbs, like in Willowbrook. And I don't know about you. Where did you grow up, Lauren? In Ann Arbor, Michigan. So same, you, same experience of cold where I hated the cold growing up, you know? And like, I remember the, and in your house, I don't know how it was, but we had the vents with the heat coming out of the, on, on the ground. And I yes. would take like a bed sheet and I would make like a little igloo of heat and my dad would get so mad. He's like, why is this room cold? Where is Sonal? You know, and I'd be like in my little, with my feet poking out, you know, and he's like, oh my God, oh my God, not, the house is not getting heated because. <laughs> and I, and that's actually, um, I traveled for so many years because I was like, I hate, the second it would start to get cold, I'm like, I hated having, I would lose one glove and be like, that's it. My life is over. You know, like, it's just <laughs> catastrophe. You know, and, and I like make a glob out of my sleeve, and oh my god, I hated. I remember like weighing all of the clothes that I was wearing when I was like <laughs> eleven or twelve years old. Like we're carrying around twenty pounds of clothes. This is we're all living in a gym. Every step we take, you know, so. <laughs> God, I was, I was, my poor parents, I was such a nightmare growing and up. You went to school in the Midwest, in Indiana? Is that yeah, right? two years, two years, so I'm an official Hoosier. I okay. mean, I, don't I, don't, I, I had a great time at Indiana. I took, like I said, I took a lot of psychedelics. And I made out with a lot of white people. It was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> but I did have a moment where I was like, oh my God, this is too many white people. Let me go back to U of I. You know where it's a, it felt it, it actually felt like so much more diverse like illinois versus indiana sorry indiana no disrespect to all your really cool white people but <laughs> it felt like and then i spent my um senior year abroad i went to chile and awesome. i mean if you're in col i don't know if you have any college students listening to this but get your ass abroad there's so many resources i was friends with this guy who was like very clever at like getting grants and you know he's like i'm going to costa rica to spend a year with orangutans yeah i just wrote a paper oh and God. now they're giving me a bunch of money and i'm like oh well i just found a program where it was like cheaper for me to be in chile than it was to be in illinois yeah. and um yeah i speak like really fluent so spanish smart. now that's amazing, Sono. Now what's going on? Okay, now she's like lining the parchment paper pan with yes. some flour. Yep, and I, I spread on the butter, and I used a little pastry brush. Um, like dry flour? Is that dry flour? On yeah, the... this is dry flour here. Just to, I buttered and then floured the pan. Oh, my God. I didn't know that you do like dry flour. Okay, and now we're putting, now we're putting the eggs and the sugar in. <laughs> Yes, we're putting everything in the pan and it's gonna go in the oven for 30 minutes. Um, and I have to tell you that I cooked one of these ahead of time. <gasps> like I, a real cooking show. I know, that's why this is my most complex setup to date, Sono. When did you cook the other cake? Did you wake up at like five in the morning to start baking? I did it last night. Okay, God. Oh and my then God. I know. And then I couldn't. I don't know why I'm crouching down like this, like I'm sitting on a toilet. Um, <laughs> and that looked that looked like good form. Those thank excellent you. Form. It's my squats. I've been practicing. I also love that you bought a timer because I feel like there we have so many timers. Like there's a timer on the microwave, timer on the phone, timer. <laughs> uh, I don't. 
I went to this, okay, so a, a plug for a local store at the Wooden Spoon in Andersonville. I went and I'm like, I am starting a cooking podcast. And she was so lovely and kind and, and definitely took me seriously. Like I actually <laughs> don't really, <laughs> I don't really know how to do any of this, but I was like, I need a timer, an apron, oven mitts, a skillet, like all this stuff. So I bought this, yeah. <laughs> And then I told Kelsey I had to Google how to use it, but I got ah, it. <laughs> good to watch a YouTube tutorial, how to use your timer. I, I'm like drowning in technology and you would think this is the easiest, but it wasn't, so. Um, I find all of this very attractive, by the way. I think that it's amazing. <laughs> I love all of the, what are these like um, measuring cups or spoons, the little color array down there, the purple and the green, are, the, are those? Oh. Yeah, I got my little, my measuring things and I, oh, I've got, so this is going to be for our frosting setup. Um, we got some butter, we got some more sugar, more sugar, we've got milk and um, yeah, we're going to make our frosting and then I'm going to decorate it in your honor. Now, I love it. I love it. I this love is it. supposed to be you. You're a little <laughs> pink owl on a toothpick. Oh my God, because I'm so wise and rosy. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> like, okay, I could construct it out of something else, but then I didn't want to offend you by like making a picture of you somehow. Oh, and I, I can't be offended. I love this. I love this. <laughs> I love this. Oh um, my God. Have you ever heard of this cake shop, this cake lady on Instagram? She's a Chicago lady, Bon Vivon Cakes. No. Okay, that's a plug. Bon, B O N V I V A N T. Um, I've been watching her on Instagram and I'm like, oh, I need to get off my phone, but this is amazing. <laughs> I hope everyone upped their cooking game during the pandemic, you know? Oh, yeah. Have you? I, have you been? Oh, I, yeah. I actually used to get really stressed looking up recipes on because it's just like too many, you know, you're like eggplant Parmesan, you know, like 400 pages. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. But then with the pandemic, I spent a day where I was like looking at eggplant Parmesan recipes for like four hours. And I was <laughs> like, oh my God, there's so many things that you can do with everything. Yeah. I know. I don't even know how people did anything before the internet. I mean, it's overwhelming, Ooh. but like literally I Googled how to create a round parchment paper out of a square. And like, I watched videos and I practiced. It's amazing, Lauren. It's, it's a whole new world that's opening up right now. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> and do you, do you cook savory things or mainly <laughs> I do I do but like I was like okay I'm doing a podcast I can't bake a roast chicken on the podcast yeah you could I mean I could but it'd be like three hours later like okay but that would be so amazing if you're like and here's the one that I made last night and you pull out another roast chicken <laughs> I know I know but like I I need to start moving into some savory things you know I yeah, it's got to happen soon. You know, there's like potatoes, there's nachos, there's like... What about you? Do you have any um, like social media cooks that you're really into? Um, hmm. Or any websites that you're like, this is so Yeah, helpful. more like on Instagram, I, I'll see like interesting demonstrations like Food 52 and Bon Appetit. Um, Allison Roman, I just like reading her. She has like a little newsletter um from the new york times or like it's her own thing but that's how i've learned about her amazing yeah yeah just some different things um okay hang on i've got to think for a minute okay it's time for us to start making the frosting oh so I i'm have... getting i'm getting very close to the computer so i can see okay i have to um this is just our butter i'm just gonna beat it until it's fluffy so and you've got a, what kind of butt? Is that like a Cuisinart? This is this little guy is just a little KitchenAid beater. I don't I don't have one of those fancy like stand. That that looks beater. pretty fancy to me. I mean like you have technology beating I, butter. Yeah, I do. I do have that. I will say. Um, 
sono, sono, sono. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was talking to one of my girlfriends, like all these male comedians at home during the pandemic. I feel like they're just eating like saltines and <laughs> tuna straight out of the can. And my girl, a very good friend of mine, I'm like, what does your boyfriend eat? And she's like, a lot of frozen stuff from Trader Joe's. I'm like, oh God. Oh goodness. Yeah. I mean, I totally get it. Like if you're on, if you're pressed for time or like whatever, but I mean, I'm thinking about what I'm having for dinner at noon. You know, yeah, like, I mean, what these people are not pressed for time. This is like you're playing 12 hours of video games a day. Exactly. You know, you, you can, <laughs> you can. Wow, look at that. It's fluffing right up. So what's it's, in there? Butter? This is just the butter and the powdered sugar. But what I do need to do is start adding a little bit of um, milk and a little bit of vanilla and then keep mixing in the sugar as we go. Um, so, and that's organic. She hand milked that cow. She, <laughs> is it, is it organic milk? See, I've list, I listened to the first episode. You are so good. So no, <laughs> I know Kelsey was just shaming me. For my <laughs> I, love, I love, I love, I'm sorry. It's organic. It's so, I would wear that t-shirt. It's so funny. <laughs> So, it is so weird to be like, I, I actually watched this woman, Tab Tabitha Brown. She does all these like crazy vegan recipes where she's oh. like, she's like, oh honey, we're making vegan deviled eggs. And it's actually like a pickled mushroom, you know? And you're like, it's not, it's not an egg. I made that. I made that actually the vegan, the vegan deviled eggs. And I'm like, this is so good. It, is, was it good? It was so good. Instead wow. of, you know, you pickle, like, a, you just put a button mushrooms, a uh, button mushrooms, uh, multiple button mushrooms into, okay. like, whatever pickle jar you have in the fridge with that pickle juice in there. Let it pickle for a day or two. And then um, you make this, like, chickpea paste. Ooh. I don't even know what goes into a regular deviled egg, though. So I, I don't know. Um, Do you yeah. know? mayonnaise mustard um and then it's like the hard boiled egg and you like scoop some of it out and mm. yeah and a little like paprika maybe i just might have made that up but no paprika is totally on point you are a pro lauren's a pro do not get it twisted <laughs> I get so, it. No. <laughs> oh my god have you been doing um stand-up shows have you been performing like i've been zooming yeah I mean, I think it's, I, when people are like, I don't really like doing Zoom shows, I'm like, do you have options? Like, what, what is that like? Do you have, what are you, I mean, I mean, I, I have been on Zoom shows where I have actually laughed so hard, you know, and then I've been on Zoom shows where I'm like, I'm just going to put myself on mute and turn my camera off mm -hmm. and enjoy this time where you can do this because I feel like at live shows, I feel like such an obligatory laugh comes out of me, you know, where like sometimes I'm laughing, I'm like, ha 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 ha. And I'm like, what was that? That's not <laughs> even a real laugh. <laughs> what are you doing? You, know? <laughs> feel... you have to fill the room. And on a Zoom show, I mean, yeah. the bar is much lower, you know, mm -hmm. so to be able to create laughter in a digital realm, I think is actually um, incredibly connecting, you know, really connects you to something. It's, I mean, it's endorphins. It's in, it's adrenaline. It's a lot of the same stuff where it's like, I mean, to be able to laugh out loud on your own, I think is an incredible thing. So I've been on some Zoom shows where I'm like, this is great. How about you? Are you doing any Zoom in? Um, no, I had like two. I completely, I was awful. I mean, I just was. <laughs> yeah, but no one's asking. I, <laughs> I will, it is funny to see like, we're in a time right now, like if people aren't posting to social media, I'm like, are you alive? I, you know, there's no way to know. I know you're right. And I am practically dead, but here I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are living. You are living. Look, at, She's got multiple cakes on the go. And I mean, I'm sure people are doing loads there. I feel like people like won't post. And then suddenly it's like, 
boom, I just uh, self-published a book or something, yeah. you know, and you're like, what the hell? I know. I know. They're sneaky because everyone's like, we're not doing anything. We're so unproductive. And then they <laughs> like do something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, I mean, I definitely, I'm, I, how old are you, Lauren? I'm putting the blue food coloring in. And that was not an attempt to subvert your question. I love that. I was like, <laughs> okay, never mind. Oh, no. I, I can't even say it. The other day I was like, I forgot how old I am. I am, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 42. What? Bitch, you look so good. You look like a teenager. Oh my God. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you came on the I I thought we were the same age. I'm 37. So I think oh. that's just what you do though. You just make everybody your age. That's true. You like do. when I was in my twenties, I'm like, everybody's 20. You know, <laughs> and then remember when 40 sounded like so old? So no. Oh my God. Honest <laughs> God. I can't even, I just thought 40 year olds were like the worst, most uninteresting people. <laughs> I would go to a bar with my 20 year old friends or whatever. And like looking at the 40 year olds, like, Look at the loser ladies. <laughs> and now it's like, I mean, do you have, do you end up in this conversation when people find out your age and they're like, oh my God, no. Well, I went to grad school. Um, I was only like, God, I was 32. And I would, we were talking <laughs> about Columbine. And I, I was saying like, I remember that clearly. And the girl next to me who was, you know, 23 turned and she's like, wait a minute, how old are you? <laughs> like, 32. I mean, she looked at me like I was a relic from the past. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell us about analog phones. <laughs> tell us about the landline. I mean, so no, I grew up like, oh my God, I would call the time lady. Do you remember the time lady? Like, no, I don't. What's the time lady? I'm you just sorry. You call like 555-1212 five, 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 one, two, one, two or something, and she would just tell you the time. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> At the tone, the time will be 551 mm -hmm. and 10 seconds. Oh, okay. I, I, do, I do remember that. I didn't know. Oh. I didn't. I didn't. I remember like, um, what was her name? That psychic. Uh, Cleo. Oh. Madam Cleo. And then there was, that was like one of the big, first big scams. Turns out she was like faking that persona the whole time. <laughs> Cleo, I forgot about her. And I also have so many phone numbers in my head. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like the neighbor from when we were kids that that's not even a working phone number anymore, you know, but like I, it's in there. It's in there. Yeah. <laughs> my, totally. My mom's work number, dad's work number, you know, the, so many of like the little auntie, uncle group, so many phone numbers. Yeah. I have so many phone numbers in my exactly. head. Exactly. Which That's is why I can't remember anyone's name. Okay. So <laughs> please leave me alone. <laughs> so, no, oh my God. Okay. So this was my, here's my pre-baked cake. It's beautiful. It looks so good. I mean, it is, there is like an alchemy to cooking and baking where it's like, you're putting in these raw ingredients and look at that. That looks like a fluffy, fluff of d deliciousness. I know. And this is, this is the um, blue frosting. I might put more food coloring in, in your honor. I like it. It looks very like polar like bear blue. Okay. Okay. We're going to go with this. I'm going to frost this. So have no, you, oh, have you had any like baking disasters? Like, well, not on, not live. I mean, <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> because I feel like people get really, I remember, I remember still in college, I, I like put in salt instead of sugar for this batch of cookies. And then I was like banned from cookie, you know, and they're like, you're not allowed to make cookies anymore. I'm like, this is learning. This, this is how you learn. You know, like you, you gotta, you gotta burn the rice to learn how to make rice. You know? Oh, totally. Yeah, you do that, have to. That's my little TED talk. No, I love it. The... <laughs> I love the um, the salt instead of sugar because there's a lot of sugar in cookies, so that must have been. Hilarious. Oh, that that was. They were so bad. They were so bad. Oh and my god. It was one of those like you take a bite and you're like, oh, because they they looked 
good. They looked gorgeous, you know. And, and then you took a bite, and it was a big batch. Uh, I'm re reliving that. This is a healing moment right now. Okay, I have to release that. I have to release that. Past it, past it, and breathe through it, Sonal. Oh my God. So I want to hear about some of your other adventures because I know you are an adrenaline junkie. It's just something <laughs> I know about you, aside from all of the research that I did, like Terry Gross, for this podcast. Nice. That's professional. Oh, yes. But like, I know that you were, were or are still a fire dancer and like you do other like street performance. I was a street performer for a year okay. in uh, 2008. That was that, that which like, I mean, God, if you're in your 20s, you would have been like uh, eight years old or something, you know, in 2008. <laughs> and, and, um, um, it was it was so incredible because I was in Europe and there is so much more of a culture of street performing there where like you see and then like you want to give like a one euro, two euro coin versus here people, I feel like people are like embarrassed to see street performance or are kind of like, oh, that's cool, you know, and we'll like take a picture and keep walking. I mean, I'll give like a dollar, five dollars mm -hmm. when I see, because you think about how much you would spend on a coffee, people, you know, and um, I was, I was living in uh, Paris, ooh la la, with this, and and it was amazing because I was living with this guy from Quebec, and he was an incredible street performer. You can, I'll send you a link, the Mr. Banana Show, where he would build this structure and put like a, a like a tightrope, like it was it was a slack line, but whatever. I don't need to get into technical circus jargon right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you know a tightrope is tight a slack line has slack in it and then he would use like a kid from the audience to help him I'm doing air quotes right now for listeners because he didn't really need the help it's just to create audience participation mm -hmm. you know to get up on the slack line and juggle five balls for like 30 seconds and he was making like 500 euros a show Whoa. or something like this huge hat where he'd get a huge audience and people would be lining up just to make eye contact with him and be like, thank you. Thank you for the show. And I mean, if you think about the training of performing in a street environment where I, and then I was working with this um, Mexican woman named Pamela who has now abandoned me and has three kids. So that's pretty what? bogus. The nerve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So selfish, <laughs> and the husband, ugh, yeah. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> they actually like lead ayahuasca ceremonies in Mexico now and are fully thriving. And I hate her. No, <laughs> she's Wait, so what's, gorgeous. What's that? What's an ayahuasca ceremony? Ayahuasca is a plant combination from South America that creates like a psychedelic spiritual journey you know and like sting oh, yeah. is really into ayahuasca for all the moms listening to this podcast it's not drugs it's medicine okay, okay. so <laughs> i mean you're, you're gonna have some stuff to look up after oh, no. i totally am i can't say i'll do it because i can't even imagine how frightened i'll be um, well that's why you but... need like a good facilitator you need a good person there who's like, you know, fear is part of it. It's very similar to getting on stage. It really is. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what, what was your first time like? Were you not like shitting yourself the first time that you went on stage? But then that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. So, okay. Keep going. So you're talking about um, your street performance and the guy that you lived with, the, but with the and then I was living with this, and then the three of us, with the, this Mexican girl, we were doing like a, a fire dancing show in the night. And I mean, that's something really like the youth should learn how to, because when you're in your 20s, you know, you can just be covered in like soot and fuel, you know, and fall asleep like that, you know, and you're like, ah, you know, <laughs> then, then you hit like 27 and you're like, is there going to be a shower at the gig, <laughs> you know, and you're like, let me see the contract. And everything, I mean, it's the same with being a comedian where like being, having fun is our job. So fun is work. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, how am I being compensated to work 
which mm-hmm. is then fun, you know, and like this whole idea of, you know, you're doing the gig for exposure is, is such bullshit, you know, like pay your artists, pay your artists. And, and to be um, a street performer in a place where that actually exists is so liberating because you don't need a manager and you don't need an agent. You don't need to book a venue, you know, you yeah. just set up, boom, you do your show. And then, you know, you see the cops come in you're like, okay, we got to go. You know, but she was actually incredible at speaking to the police. Like, she would just be like, she's speaking to the police in Spain, and she's like, Yo te veo primero como ser humano, luego como policía. I'll never forget it. She goes, I see you first as a human being, then as a policeman. Wow. (laughs) What? Okay, she's a super hot Mexican girl. Okay, so, like, let's focus on the pretty privilege. It's not like... (laughs) she's humanizing cops you know oh my god yeah that's pretty incredible that's an incredible response truly Um, okay now we've got some decor happening yeah i'm decorating it with like little blue icicle things amazing Um, which is literally what the lake looked like last week when it was an ice palace oh my god are you afraid you're gonna get stuck in the ice Maybe if I went off on my own and went like, you know, I'm following other people into like, yeah. that's, that's our ice hole, you know, and they're like, it's super solid underneath. So I did, I did go to Humboldt Park, which is, you know, a beautiful park here in Chicago. And it was covered in snow as well. And I was like walking on the lake and I got so freaked out. And I don't even think that that's that deep, you know, it's like a fake yeah. lake. But I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm getting really freaked out. I need to get back on ground. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do not blame you. That's my worst nightmare. I mean, Sono, I, I, oh, God, I'm so afraid of water. I am. The, really? Do you not swim? No, I, I can swim and I do swim and I sort of enjoy it, but, but not really. Like, I, even in a lake, I'm like, I know there's a shark in here somewhere. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, there, the, even in the lake, like, more than sharks, there is, like, a, a, a rip and a, a tide. Like, yes. people have been taken out, which is, oh, my God, it's unbelievable to me. I mean, it's, it's incredibly deep, Lake Michigan. You oh, know, yeah. I also get more freaked out by, like, pollution. And, I mean, my understanding is there's sewage. In, yeah. But yeah, I don't care about that. Just as long as there's no <laughs> sharks or polar bears. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, I, I definitely I'm scared of the ocean. I I remember the first time I swam in the Pacific Ocean and I felt like <gasps> like um I was like 18. It was like my first real experience of of fear because I was just like a obnoxious bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So no. Okay. I'm putting, I'm putting you in your a tiny little cute owl. Oh my God. I'm so cute. I love me. I love me as a pink owl. You're just going right in. You're just, there it is. You went in the lake. Oh my God. Well, you got to like submerge the owl. Come, no, but don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> now you're a little bit more. <laughs> I love it. It's so beautiful. I can't. Um, I can't eat the owl, right? No, don't eat the owl. It's not. It's just a post-it note, in fact. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what? You made that out of a post-it note? No, it was made. I know. No, oh, you're okay, I'm Lauren. Busy. You're doing the most. You're doing. Yeah. yeah. You're making multiple cakes. You're good. I know. I mean, podcasting is the hardest job I've ever had. So. Are, are you serious? Not no. really, but sort of a little bit. This okay. is such a labor of love. I mean, people don't realize how much work goes into a quality podcast. Yes, and and I don't know if mine is quality, but that's what I'm working on. You know, <laughs> I I love it. I love it. Um, Sono, I have to ask you a couple of questions. When I was again researching you, your bio it just cracked me up because the first sentence out of like six in your bio says. Sonal is a, not a suitable marriage candidate, but is a great comic. And so <laughs> that just like resonated. Why did you write that? What does that mean? I should probably update that bio. I think, I think that I think when I, when I wrote it, I was, what was I like 34? And um, 
I mean, my mom is still, she's just so obsessed with arranging a marriage for me. She's not even like, she's like, let's skip the dating. Let's, let's just get, why can't I, why can't you just get married? I mean, I don't, I, I feel like I am in a time of an abundance of incredible women and, you know, pretty lame old men. Mm-hmm. I love men. I have no, I have a lot of really, really dear male friends. God, I feel like like a, a racist person. It's like, I know black people. I love black people. You know, but it's <laughs> like, I feel like that with men, you know, where it's like, I swear they're not all bad. But in terms of like who I would date, I feel like, I feel like it just always turns into double where you're like mothering these men and you know like anybody that doesn't know their way around the kitchen i i'm like you are an unsafe person please stay away from me like my last serious relationship his parents were chefs and he he was incredible in the kitchen and there was nothing more erotic to me than like you know watching him chop an onion i'm like damn that is so hot <laughs> yeah. but and he, he would actually he corrected my onion chopping he's like it's better if you you know, you know the turn your fingers in move? Oh, yeah. Yes. So he taught me that. And, I mean, like, fellas, learn your way to navigate around the kitchen. You know, yeah. like, I'm yeah. sure you, I'm sure you've i sure you researched where the clit is, and for some reason you still can't find it. But, you know, like, learn how to chop a damn onion. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you can't do that, then at least learn how to clean up really, really well. Not just like do the couple of dishes that are already in the sink. Why do people think that that's doing the dishes? Oh God, yeah, that could be. We got We have to do another episode to get to get all into that. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I I I don't know what people want from a marriage candidate. I just felt like it. I wasn't fulfilling those requirements because I'm like, I, I will marry you if I can. Spend your money and be up all night doing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Marry me if these are things that you're looking for. Yeah, I should yeah. make a little bullet point list. I should. I need to update the website. So I'm yeah. like looking. I'm looking for college students that need homework assignments fulfilled that can like help me with. <laughs> that can help you with your website. Yeah, I don't know if that's the best plan, but if there are any college students listening this and need to do a website for homework, please hit me up. <laughs> this is amazing. They can have an internship with you, Sonal. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm take, I'm looking for interns. Oh, man. Yeah, that just is so funny to me. It resonated so much reading that because my first thought what? was mom. Like, I was, like, literally thinking, what does her mom make of that sentence? You know, because as someone whose mom it. is just like, oh, I can still hope, you know, that you'll get married, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and anyway, so I totally get like the complexity of that situation. Yeah. Um, and what was my other question? Oh, also on your website, you said, please don't say this word if you can't say it properly. Namaste. 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 Like must. Namaste. You must. Namaste. Because we say namaste, you know, and I'm like, why? Why has that? Why do they teach us it's Rome, Italy? If they say Roma, you know, like they're just training us to sound stupid in this country, you know, we're like, we don't even, oh God. Yeah, we that, don't need any help going, you know, sounding. Sounding stupider. We yeah. don't need help sounding stupider. Yeah. So it's like, just learn how to say stuff properly. Otherwise, don't say it, you know, yeah. like, God, it's such a no weird must. thing. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, my final question. Well, I don't know if it's my final question. You know, when you're doing stand up and you're like, before I, before I let you go, you know, <laughs> one little bit, it's like, I'm preparing you. I'm preparing the viewers, but no, I was just wondering like, what, like, what is your dream? Sono? like, I, you know, I know you do all kinds of different things. Like, it seems to me that you've had a very interesting life and you've done street performance. I know we didn't get a chance to talk about your solo show, but I was there 
Oh, that means so much to me because it's like you put so much effort into creating something and then you're like, was that good? I don't know. It was like, amazing. And um, honestly, I've seen solo shows that I felt were kind of snoozers. Like I still yeah. give people credit, like no matter what, good on it's you. It's so hard. Yeah. But yeah. yours was especially unique because you had dancing, you had like some singing, you had you had the, like, you brought out the mic and you kind of simulated, like, stand-up clips. Yes, um, yes. Was, I so appreciate hearing that. Yeah, and more power. So awesome. I, I have to credit my director, John Old Reyes, who's a, who's a Chicago guy. And, you know, like, if you want to do things, just, put, you know, put yourself out there and start talking to people about it because then people want to help you bring your vision into reality. And to answer your question, what I would – really love to do you know on the topic of because the show is called the alchemy of bliss i have this vision because bliss i think is this you know is something that we can access no matter what resources you have you know like with the jumping into the lake you know you, you don't need anything you don't need anything you just need to get yourself to the lake and like a bathing <laughs> a bathing suit you know and you need Maybe. to get in get out some towels towels is good but you know you don't need a bunch of gear you know, you don't, you don't need a bunch of equipment. And I, and that feeling of bliss, I think is something um, that I really want to explore. So I have this idea for a docu-series called The Bliss Diaries. And that would involve like a, a small production team and like going off into different places in the world, you know, and like that's, that's really what I want to put my energy into somehow the manifestation of that. I would, I would just love that. I'd love to be traveling safely, you know, with making sure Hang on, sorry. Okay. Oh, the timer! Yeah, I'll get it in one sec. It's okay. Wait, but we don't want it to burn. Okay, okay. And, <laughs> and we want to see it because it's come out. Oh my gosh, it smells really good in here. Um, oh my god, I wish I could smell. I, I uh, wish Zoom had a smell feature. I'm, Look at that! Oh, it's amazing. It's that, yeah. that's alchemy. I'm telling you, just taking simple raw things, even making salads. I felt like so much bliss from like roasting some pumpkin seeds and making these honey mustard vinaigrettes and putting in like a little pomegranate. And I'm like, this is incredible. Cause I was never really a big salad person. And now with the pandemic, I've been like yeah. watching salad videos. <laughs> watching salad videos. <laughs> and that's part of your bliss. That's part of my bliss. That's part of this pursuit of bliss. And to be blissful doesn't mean that all the other feelings aren't important too. You know, like, rage you know you have you have to experience anger also so that you know what feeling good and feeling happy feels like you know like i get a little freaked out by people that are like i'm just blissed out all the time i'm like oh my god when you lose it it's gonna be a fucking hurricane you know? <laughs> yeah plus that's just like i don't know that's just not that's not reality those people are that's not real yes no. Exactly. No. We should no. hook them up to a lie detector and yeah. Watch that thing. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Exactly. No, I love love that idea of a docu series. You would be <laughs> an incredible host and narrator and travel. Now's doctor. the time. Now's the time. We need more women in general. We. I mean, I'm a woman of color. Bonus. You know, like let's. Yeah. Let's take and I and I've traveled for so many years and I think that. Laughter is one of the deepest expressions of love, you know, not to sound like really, you know, like a, what, what do they say? Like a, the hippie sound. Like a hippie dippy kind of. Like a hippie dippy kind of thing, you know, yeah. but it's, it's really true when you make somebody laugh, especially like in their language with, you know, the four words that you speak of Turkish or German or Japanese or whatever, you know, like it is. It, it connects you in a way where they're like, oh, she made me laugh, you know, and then you feel this like trust and you can feel yourself relax. And I mean, yeah, it's a, it's an incredible gift to be able to make people laugh. Oh, yeah. I went to Ecuador and I said, um, yo voy, I can't remember. I said, I'm going to ride. Yo voy al... Montar. Yo voy a montar. A botan. Montar, montar, montar. Motar, yeah, 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 Motar. Yeah, and then I said, um, caballos, <laughs> which, 
which is I mean, so funny. I'm going to like go, what did I say to them? Like, I'm, I'm going to ride horses. No, no. I said, I'm um, caballeros. Ah! Like, I'm going to ride like a Mexican gentleman or something. And, it sounds um, like I'm going to ride cowboys. Yeah. 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 I'm going to ride cowboys. And these people were dying laughing and they're like, <laughs> so funny. Me too, because it's so sweet. It's so sweet, you know, because you're so pure intentioned, you know, and you're like, I want to ride horses, but it sounds like you're going to fuck cowboys. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited to say it and like, yeah. Oh my God. So no, this Great has joke. been so much fun. I am excited. I'm going to drop off your little, um, cake. Okay. We'll coordinate that so that you. I can give you a hug and give you, give you the mic back. I'm going to order one now, a lapel mic. I love this. Yeah. They're so good. It's so good. Um, and then, yeah. And then you can try some of this and you and can tell me about it and yeah. Oh, I'm told I'll, I'll make a little story about it and tag you and save it so Aww. that we can share that with, I love what you're doing. I love the, I love this project. I wish you all the best and, and so much, uh, fluffiness in your in your cooking adventures Aww, thanks is... Sono. I, I miss you i can't wait until we can like really hang out and laugh and be silly and i want to thank you so much for your time and your courage the lake michigan stuff like maybe one of these days i'll join you but probably not because i will hyperventilate and drown no that's not true that's just your mind you'll breathe your your body is capable of so much i'll, I'll just think of you with my inner bliss <laughs> And yes. I, I want to say thank you to Lincoln Lodge and Christine Ferreira, who is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, and, and that's it. So I will, oh, and, and don't, don't hang up yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you. And I love you. And I'll talk to you soon. And Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone.